गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल ऑफ यू टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट क्लास सेवन एस एस टी पार्ट हिस्ट्री चैप्टर नंबर टू किंग्स एंड किंगडम पार्ट वन नाउ बिफोर स्टार्टिंग द चैप्टर लेट मी टेल यू द स्टोरी दैट इज बिहाइंड द एमरजेंस ऑफ न्यू किंगडम ड्यूरिंग द सेवेंथ सेंचुरी नाउ you have already heard about the name of harshvardhan and in the class 6 basically so the fi- the fight between harshvardhan and polkesen second were the event w- which uh, was the event that led to the emergence of the new kingdoms in the 7th century so let me tell you give you brief Uh, description about the harshvardhan so as you have heard uh, read in the class 6 that harshvardhan is belongs to the vardhan dynasty and there were several uh, kings in those in that vardhan dynasty so uh, one king was there his name was prabhakaran prabhakar vardhan and his uh, his wife named yashomati and they have two son and one daughter that is rajyavardhan and harshvardhan one daughter that rajeshuri is married to the king of kannauj king grahavarma so after some time the ruler of malwa there was devgupt who killed the grahavarma and made the rajeshuri his hostage so the two brothers of rajeshuri that is rajyavardhan and harshvardhan fought against his uh, uh, this dev uh, dev gupt and uh, because of it this rajyavardhan killed dev gupt basically but dev gupt friend that is uh, king shashank he killed the rajyavardhan so for the support of his uh, his sister harshvardhan fought against shashank and he controlled over the kannauj so basically kannauj we have to read a uh, several things about kannauj in this chapter so that is why i had i had started with the story of harshvardhana so after this harshvardhan made his capital kannauj after acquiring the kannauj and after helping his sister rajeshri now there is a fight between harshvardhan and polkesen second so after that there were so many chiefians and vassals were started rising in those tri- in that time so let me tell you what is basically vassal or the chiefians or samantas so uh, if i give you example like if rcm needs to run the state so he need several minister to run it so for that he had what he has done he shared his power among them so why he has shared his power among them to just make the rule easy for that he shared his power to the various ministers as well as some bureaucrats means the uh, civil servants basically so what they do they help to run smoothly the government basically so likewise in the earlier time also kings were used vassal or chiefians and they shared their powers to them so they protect their territories and give some some of uh, uh, gift uh, uh, I mean soldiers there are a lot of things in in return they give it to like feudalism we have read in the civics so they do these things basically and but sometimes what happens these vessels become powerful after getting money after getting wealth they become powerful they don't want to be the part of the main ruler basically so because of it these small rulers or small chiefians become the ruler of their particular territories that they have get from the main ruler so 
what they do they started they basically they deny, started denying the orders of the main ruler so because of it they become powerful as well as one samanta any of the samanta or the the vessel become the ruler of that particular area so always everybody needs the more territory everybody needs more wealth so for this purpose he has started conquering the other nearby chiefians or the vessels territory so for this purpose they started fighting among each of them so this makes the rulers weak and because of it the because of this the many other rulers took the advantage of it and they started fighting against some of those kings so in this chapter we have to read about these this topic basically that how the chiefians become so much powerful as well as for what for, for which particular area they were fought against so in this chapter we'll read about kannauj also the the city of the uttar present present day uttar pradesh city and why they fought uh, why they fought for the kannauj that we will look in the in the chapter now let us go the 7th century the time period where the chiefians or the vassals were rose in prominence in different part of the indian subcontinent as i told you these chiefians or vassals like or samantas were rose in the in that era why they rose they because they declared themselves independent from the main kingdom after getting power wealth they asserted their independence and established independent kingdom means after getting power and wealth they become independent and they started establishing the independent kingdom like if i give you example there danti durga or danti varman from rajputa dynasty was the vessel of chalukya so chalukya was the main king and the danti durga was his chiefian or the vessel but he overthrew the chalukyas and established his own dynasty that he named it rast kota that we'll read in the next slides so this was the example there are several examples that shows that ki vessels have overthrown their rulers and become the independent kingdom now between the time period of 750 ce to the 1200 ce the rajputs dominated the history of northern and central india so this was the time where these rajputs were dominant in the area of northern and central india so basically uh, in the last history chapter means basically the first history chapter i had explained about some of the rajputs family like solar family lunar family they belongs to these particular families and they were the they said ki they they are from the sun or the moon family moon basically god so they were the most powerful rajputs during those period and also we have studied about the agnikul that they also belong from the rajput family so as i told you that the story that is start with the end of war between the harshvardhan that he belongs to the vardhan dynasty and pulkesin that he belongs to the chalukyan dynasty so in which who won the battle that is won by the pulkesin second that he belongs to the chalukyan dynasty now uh so as i told you ki harshvardhan was helping his sister that is rajeshri and he controlled over the kanauj and he made his capital so as you know after losing uh, from any of the king rulers that state that kingdom become become vacant or somebody else those who fought between them and they captured they they captured those territories those areas so kanauj was more special In, the, in that area a why kanauj was special so in geography term you have read that the rivers basically the ganga river and its tributary and its tributary brought the several sediments with it and they deposited all those in the plain areas and they again went uh, go to the ocean, uh, bay of bengal basically so the kanauj is the land which is comes under the two 
रिवर्स दैट इज यमुना एंड गंगा सो एज यू एज आई टोल्ड डैट कि द रिवर्स ब्रॉड द सेडिमेंट्स विद दैम एंड सेड डिपॉजिट ऑल दोज थिंग्स एंड मेड दैट एरिया फर्टाइल सो दिस एरिया इज वेरी फर्टाइल मीन्स वन साइड दैट इज गंगा रिवर एंड अनदर दैट इज यमुना रिवर and that particular area is known as ganga yamuna deva and ganga yamuna deva was very fertile still it is very fertile so in the, in that time it was very fertile and that that is the reason all the kingdoms wanted to conquer that area so what is the reason behind that because in the earlier time the main source of income was the land revenue okay so land revenue is is basically what the people those who are having most fertile land and they having the most production they get all uh, they give all the taxes to the king or the rulers so that is why kanauj was most important place to conquer by the several kingdom okay so this kanauj is become so much important during that reason it was also important in the previous time also but in the medieval history it was become more important because during that time kanauj become the important city in the 7th century because uh, it produces a lot of uh, it it, it uh, there was a lot of agricultural work was done also the these rivers ganga yamuna provide the uh, transportation system as well as kanauj becomes the most prominent city during that those period and it become the most important center of trade and commerce so this is the reason the kanauj become the more <coughs> famous during the reason of the uh, medieval period so see there because of its strategic position kanauj fostered trade and commerce and high fertility of the soil that encourages the agriculture growth so that i told you that it increase the trade and commerce because of the fertile, fertile area and the become become after becoming the important city also the it increases the agricultural growth so if agricultural growth is there the, the king whosoever is ruling in that area definitely get the maximum amount of taxes for, through it after the disintegration of harshvardhan empire it was equally interested to acquiring control over kanauj by new kingdoms so whosoever the whatsoever the new kingdom is arising do uh, during that period they all wanted to took control over the kanauj so that is why kanauj become the important city so most what we have to read in this topic is that that there is three dynasty those who are continuously fought for the control over kanauj and the last it it lasted more than one century one century it's the kingdoms were gujars pratihar that they belongs to the malwa areas the rajputa that they belong to the deccan areas palas they belong to the bengal area so they show that basically they these dynasties or kingdoms wanted to conquer wanted to capture the kanauj so what is the reason behind that that i have told you that because the kanauj become the most important city during that period because that kanauj is in between the ganga yamuna deva basically the two rivers in the the land between the two rivers is known as dwap and that land is very fertile it was very important city during that period also it was important for the trade and commerce as well as the land was fertile and it pro- it produces a lot of agricultural product and because of it the rulers get the most of income as well as these rivers provide the land tra- uh, water transportation basically so this is the reason kanauj become the important city now we'll see in the next slide about the pre partiate struggle of kanauj and who were the people those who fought against it so here i am only giving you some of the names that was uh, that was in that they have fought for the kanauj the let us start with the gurjars and pratihars so gurjars and pratihars basically 
there was one ruler his, his name was vasraj and uh, he was there and the palas there was dharmpal was the king so basically vas vasraj was and dharmpal both they were thinking to conquer the kanauj basically and there was ayudh dynasty people were living uh, means they are ruling ayudh ayudh dynasty so there indra yudh indra yudh ruler was there named ruler was there in the kanauj in that period so basically vasraj took initiative and he fought with indra yudh and conquered the kanauj so the dharmpal get angry of it and he, the the dharmpal and vasraj fought against each other so but dharmpal did not conquer and still this vasraj was there and he made indra yudh his chief ends of the kanauj means he was a ruler over there but after conquering the kanauj he made the indra yudh over there vessels of the gurjars and the pratihars so here the dhruva was also there in from the rajputa dynasty he also heard a lot of thing about the northern india so basically rajputa is belongs to the southern southern part of the india and um southern means the second part of india so basically the rajputas also wanted to conquer the kanauj because they have also heard lot of about the kanauj and its uh, the bountiful resources which is present in the kanauj so the dhruvas again went to the he started coming to the kanauj and fought fought with the vasraj and what he does he fought with the vasraj and conquered the kanauj after conquering kanauj he used to put one vessel that was his name was chakrayudh okay so chakrayudh he made him, he made to be the, uh, the place in place of the rajputa dynasty so all these people were fight with each other and this led to the three party struggle in between the gurjar pratihar pal palas and the rajputa dynasty so there were several many more kings were there they fought with each other wanted to took control over the kanauj so uh, the reason i told you I already explained that ki the reason was that they all wanted to took over control over kanauj uh, just because of the resources or the land revenue the transportation there were so many reason because of it they wanted to conquer the kanauj now let us start with one of the dynasties which were fought during the tripartite struggle of kanauj let us start with the gurjars and pratihars so basically gurjars and pratihars they were the dominant power in the western india the part of western and central rajasthan and the part of central india so basically the gurjars and pratihars were living in which area they were they were uh, their extent was western and central rajasthan so almost the area of the rajasthan as well as the parts of central india like madhya pradesh and uttar pradesh these areas so this is the extent of the gurjars and pratihars so who was the founder of the gurjars and pratihars dynasty so nagbhat first so nagbhat first was there and he uh, founded the gurjars pratihars dynasty okay now let us see some of the important rulers during uh, rulers of the gurjar pratihar like vasraj nagbhat second mihir bhoj mahendra pal mahipal etc lot of kings were there uh, 
in the Gurjar Pratihar uh, dynasty. But the important ruler was there in the Gurjar Pratihar dynasty was the Mihir Bhoj. So let us see about the Mihir Bhoj. So Mihir Bhoj was uh, here, he was there for 836 to 890 CE and he was the most prominent among all of the rulers that they belong to the Gurjars and Pratihars. So he made his capital uh, Kannauj basically and assumed the title of Vara, Adivara basically. So Adivara, why he adopted? Because he was the devotee of Lord Vishnu and he took the he took he, he basically he worshipped the incarnation of Lord Vishnu that is Vara. Okay, so because of it he titled himself as a as Adivara. Okay, so he, he also issued the silver coin. Okay, but the silver coin is bearing the emblem of Vara means the picture of Vara, the Lord Vara that is the incarnation of Lord Vishnu. Here one foreign traveller come into the uh, into this reason, this uh, time that was Al Masudi. So Al Masudi was there and he wrote a lot of things about the Gurjars and Pratihar rulers. He also wrote, wrote about the Rashtakutas also that we will read in the next slides. So basically Al Masudi also wrote a lot of things about the Gurjars and Pratihars in his book. Here Raj Shekra. He wa there was a Sanskrit poet and he was also patro uh, patronized by the Pratihara's rulers. So whatever the Pratihara's rulers were there, he was patronized by him because the every rulers wanted to write something about themselves by these scholars or the, these poets. So they, they wrote a lot of things about the Gurjars and Pratihara's. And these, this dynasty is also patronize of learning and literature. Okay. So this is the things that the Gurjars and Pratihars, they also fought for the Kannauj. As well as there were a lot of kings in between them. Mihir Bhoj was there. He was the prominent ruler in between. And he made also the capital that is Kannauj and assumed the title of Adivara. Okay. And there was one foreign traveler that came into the period of uh, this dynasty that is Al Masudi and he also wrote a lot of about the Gurjas and Pratihars and there was one Sanskrit poet that is Raj Shekhar he was wrote a lot of things about the Pratihara's rule. Now next to the Palas. So Palas are what? So these Palas are uh, they are belongs to the Bengal and nearby territories. So basically the Pal kingdoms were extended over the present day in Bengal, Bihar, parts of Odisha and Nepal. So this was the, the this was the area which is ruled by the Pal dynasty basically. So who was the founder of the Pal dynasty? So Gopal was the Gopal was the founder of the dynasty of the Pal uh, Pal dynasty basically. So in which year? 750. So where is his capital? It, it, uh, his capital was in uh, the Munger and it is in the Bihar. Right now the present day it is in the Bihar. So let us see the important ruler of the Pal kingdom that is Dharm Pal, Dev Pal, Narayan Pal, Mahipal etc. So there were several kings during the reason of the uh, this uh, seventh century and uh, and mo uh, after that also there were several kings. So let us see the important or the prominent ruler of the Pal dynasty. So the Dharam Pal was the prominent ruler of the Pal dynasty, and these Palas were patron of Buddhist learning, literature, and education. So basically, like all the other kingdoms, they have also uh, adopted the Buddhist religion and also they have issued several several notification or several notices to the to their uh, territories to their areas so likewise pal dynasty also patron of the buddhist learning literature and education okay 
सो हेयर धर्मपाल स्टैब्लिश द विक्रमशिला यूनिवर्सिटी सो बींग द पैटर्न ऑफ बुद्धिस्ट लर्निंग ही और ही स्टैब्लिश अ विक्रमशिला यूनिवर्सिटी वेयर द बौद्धिस्ट रिलीजन्स और रिलेटेड टू डार्ट एवरीथिंग इज टॉट इन दोज एरिया ऑल्सो ही प्रोवाइड द सेवरल डोनेशन टू द नालंदा यूनिवर्सिटी ओके ही प्रोवाइड द सेवरल डोनेशन फॉर द कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ द नालंदा यूनिवर्सिटी एज वेल ओके देर इज वन मोर लीडर दैट इज महिपाल द लेटर रूलर ऑफ द पाल डायनेस्टी ही डिफीटेड ही डिफीटेड ही वॉज डिफीटेड बाय द राजेंद्र चोल ऑफ द चोला डायनेस्टी दैट इज टेन ट्वेंटी थ्री सी ई एंड राम पाल वॉज देयर ही वॉज देयर आफ्टर टेन एटी टू टू इलेवन ट्वेंटी फोर ही वॉज द लास्ट नोन किंग ऑफ द पाल डायनेस्टी सो बेसिकली द पाल डायनेस्टी वॉज देयर इन द रीजन ऑफ बिहार एंड बंगाल एरिया एंड the their kingdom was in the munger now present in bihar also there was the it was founded by the gopal in 750 and as well as the dharm there were several rulers in between them dharmpal was prominent he was patronized of the buddhist learning and literature and education as well as many more palas rulers were there they were patronized of these things as well as dharmpala Established the Vikram Shila University. He donated a lot of money to the Nalanda University as well. And there were several rulers like Mahipal, Rampal. So they were the rulers which were the part of the Pala dynasty. Now move to the Rashtrakuta. So Rashtrakuta were the vessels of Chalukya. So that I had explained also. I had given the example in the beginning of the chapter. The Rashtrakutas were the vessel of the Chalukya dynasty. The Rashtrakutas. what uh, means basically this uh, the founder of the rashtrakuta danti durg overthrew the chalukyas the area that he got, get to rule that is uh, the area that is captured by the danti durga or the rashtrakutas were maharashtra gujarat and malwa area so this were the area that was the ruled by the rashtrakutas so who who was the founder of the uh, rashtrakuta dynasty that is danti durga or danti varman in year 752 ce its capital was malkhed or maniakhed near sholapur maharashtra so now nowadays it is known as sholapur and earlier it was named as the malkhed or maniakhed now let us see the important ruler of the uh, rashtrakuta dynasty that is the uh, krishna first dhruva Govind third, the, that is his year is 793 to 814 CE. Amog Varsha 18 18 uh, 814 814 to 878 CE. Krishna second, Indra third, Krishna third. So these were the rulers of the Rashtrakutas. So these rulers were also very famous famous in the medieval period of India, as well as they have fought several. fights to the gorjas pratihar chalukyas of vengi pallavas of kanchi pandyas of madurai so they fought a several fight with them and they were there to control those areas okay so uh, you have already heard about the kalash temple of elora that is built by the rashtrakutas ruler that is krishna first and also you have also read about the rock cut temples like alora elephanta that is built by the, that is also built by the rashtrakuta rulers so basically there were uh, so many religion that were uh, patronized by the chalukya uh, sorry <coughs> rashtrakuta's rulers and they over for they uh, they have like adopted jana jain religion uh, bodhist religion hindu several religion they have adopted and several kings have so because of that they built different caves that uh, you have already studied in several classes like uh, they have total made the 34 caves so in between in uh, between them 1 to 12 number 1 to number 12 caves were for the bodhist religion 
13 to 29 it is for the hindus uh, hindus religion 30 to 34 it was for, for their jain religion so there were different religion they have patronized and also they have built several temples for them now only uh, this is the thing that we have to read in the video in the next video we'll read about the several more dynasty uh, that were also emerged during this seventh century region and what they have done how they have fought with each other to wanted to took control over each other that we will read in the next video so this is the thing that we have to read in this video now your homework is that you have to write the all three uh, kingdoms who have who was the founder of all all these kingdoms that i have explained in this video that you have to write in your copy thank you students